Would you punch me in the face for a billion dollars? I'd punch you in the face for forty dollars. A billion? A billion? You'd you'd have trouble getting me off of you for a billion dollars. I would hit you with a snow shovel in front of your mom. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel where we dive deep into the truth behind modern dating, relationships, and everything in between. If you're tired of the same old narratives and want a fresh perspective, you're in the right place. Let's get into it. I realize the type of girl that my gym crush is entertaining. I've gone really put off of him. Is this normal? Like, this has happened to me before as well. Like, I was dating this guy, and then I saw the type of girls that he surrounded himself with, or the type of other girls that he was dating, and I just got really put off of him. I was just, in my head, I was like, seriously, yeah, you're aiming a bit too high now. If this is... This. But imagine, like, before you guys come for me, just imagine you're dating a girl, and then um, you see, like, the type of person that she surrounds herself with. Does that turn you guys up as well? Or is this Here's just a girlfriend? Because I know my friends, they said they're, they're the same the as me as well. Girls he's surrounding himself with. This reaction is actually pretty common and tied to deeper psychological factors. One key reason is social proof. We naturally judge people by the company they keep. If someone is surrounded by people who don't match our standards or values, it can make us question their own worth or judgment. For many women, this ties into selective judgment. A guy's friends and past relationships can act as clues to his character. If he's with people who don't align with your expectations, you might start doubting his confidence, status, or values. Another factor is hypergamy, a natural tendency in some women to seek partners who are higher status. If his social circle doesn't live up to that, it can make him seem less appealing. So, yes, it's normal to feel this way. It's a result of these deeper social and psychological forces that influence attraction. This whole women shouldn't get bulky or don't lift weights because you'll get bulky thing is just another way that society dis does women a disservice when it comes to our health. So don't get me wrong, I'm after that lean toned aesthetic that most of us are after because we've Here's been told the idea that, that is attractive. So because there's no get question it, let's harmful. just keep going this with it, right? This is just another way society discourages women from taking control of their health. Lifting weights doesn't automatically make women bulky, that's a myth. In fact, it helps build strength, improve bone health, and achieve the lean, tone look many of us are after. Now, it's true that some people say men don't like bulky women, and that adds pressure to avoid lifting weights, but this is based on outdated stereotypes. The truth is, weight training helps women reach their fitness goals, without compromising their femininity. We've been conditioned to believe that a specific body type is attractive, and we often chase this lean look without questioning why. I'm so embarrassed. I just tried cold approaching a guy and got completely shut down. Can someone tell me how to flirt with a man? I was at my favorite coffee shop and this guy I've noticed the last few times was there in front of me in line and he was totally my type. Oh, I read in a book that you should share a fun fact to break the ice. I finally mustered up the courage. I tapped him on the shoulder. I might have smiled. I don't remember, but I know I did blurt out. Hey, do you know that sharks are older than trees? I wasn't sure what he would say, but I was like, who doesn't love sharks? I wasn't expecting him to just stare at me blankly for what felt like an eternity and then finally say, that's not true. My book did not cover someone countering my fun fact. He's just supposed to think it's funny and fall in love with me. At this point, I don't even want my coffee anymore. My stomach is in my throat and my brain is blank. He sees me struggling to keep the conversation going. So he's like, yeah, trees are hundreds of years old. Oh, now he has a fun fact and it's not feeling very fun for me at all. <laughs> my palms were sweating and I all I could say was, uh-huh, okay. He just turns back to facing forward in the line, ignores me. So, I want to run out of the coffee shop, but I was like, you know, if I do shop, that, I'm just going to look even stupider. Fact about sharks. You were nervous, which is completely understandable, but the interaction didn't go as planned, and you ended up feeling embarrassed. Here's what happened. The fun fact approach can work, but it's a bit risky because it relies on the other person finding it engaging or funny. In your case, he didn't react how you expected instead of sparking a fun conversation. He challenged the fact, which threw you off. When that happens, it's easy to freeze up, because your mind was expecting a positive reaction, not a debate. To flirt more effectively in situations like this, try focusing on low-pressure interactions. Instead of leading with a random fact, you could comment on something in your environment, like the coffee shop's vibe or something he's wearing. This feels more natural and invites conversation, 
without putting pressure on the other person to react in a certain way. For example, you could say something like, I've seen you here a few times, what's your favorite coffee? Uh, this place always has the best playlists, don't you think? Remember, flirting isn't about impressing someone with facts, it's about creating a relaxed and fun vibe where both people feel comfortable. Don't worry about this interaction too much, it's all part of learning, and every awkward moment is a step closer to becoming more confident in your approach. I feel like it's like so easy nowadays for like men to pull women. Like it's way easier than guys realize. Like for guys who aren't like pulling or like there aren't girls that they like, it's so obvious. For a guy to get a girl, all he has to do nowadays is just be a gentleman. Like it's that simple. Open the door, pay for dates, shake a dad's hand, like pick the girl up at her house, like put good effort in. And when you put good effort in, you're gonna get like a good girl. Like, I don't know if that, that sounds bad. Like, if you're just only asking girls to Netflix and chill, and then you're only getting girls to Netflix and chill, and then you're wondering why they're not very committed to a relationship with you, why are you surprised? You asked her to Netflix and chill. Like, like a girl that's gonna, like, expect, like, a date and, like, being treated properly is going to also, like, usually, typically treat you well, too. The reason it's like this is because I get what there you're are about being like a much less gentlemen effort. nowadays. But let's break this down opinion. with some logic and a bit of reality. Here's the thing. It's not just about being a gentleman. Sure, opening doors, paying for dates, and showing respect is great. But it's far from the full story. Relationships and attraction are way more complex than just be nice and you'll automatically get results. If it were that simple, a lot more guys would be successful in dating, right? The truth is, modern dating has changed. Social media, dating apps, and even just societal shifts have created new dynamics. Women now have way more options than ever before. Think about it. A girl can hop on Instagram or Tinder and have down scenes of guys messaging her within minutes. The competition is real. So, being nice and polite is just the bare minimum. It's expected, not a competitive advantage. On top of that, women aren't just looking for a gentleman, they're looking for a combination of qualities confidence, status, ambition, and yes, physical attractiveness. Being a gentleman without those other factors might get you friend-zoned faster than you realize. You need to work on yourself first, improve your fitness, develop your career, build a social life, and then add the gentleman part to it. That's what makes you stand out. And let's be honest, effort alone doesn't guarantee success. If you're not aligned with what she's actually looking for, you could be wasting time. So while treating her right is important, understanding the full game and becoming the best version of yourself will get you much further. Just some food for thought. Okay guys, I have a serious hot take and you could feel free to disagree, but I genuinely believe that some of these men that are serial cheaters, and I mean like cheat on every bit ever come across without fail might be a little gay like you might be a little gay buddy like your true love might not actually be a woman and it might be a man and listen there's nothing wrong with being gay that's like not what i'm saying don't take it like that i'm just saying some of these men are in denial but like denial is a river in egypt your husband is gay or potentially gay this is not the case all the time but sometimes like i believe that it is true like, you can't sit here and tell me you hate women that bad, but you're not in the denial about liking men. Cheating might suggest okay, someone has to say it, and that someone's going to be me take. today. But let's get real here. Serial cheating isn't about secretly wanting to be with men. It's about power, options, and biology. Men are biologically wired to seek multiple partners as a way to maximize their reproductive potential. It's an evolutionary trait. That explains why some men have a higher sex drive or feel the need to explore different options. This doesn't make them a little gay. It makes them human. The truth is, many of these men don't hate women, they are just driven by a desire for variety, status, or even insecurity. In many cases, serial cheaters are looking for validation, excitement, or simply acting on impulse without much regard for consequences. Labeling this as closeted homosexuality oversimplifies the complex issue. Also, let's not ignore the cultural and psychological factors at play. In some cases, societal expectations or personal insecurities push men towards behaviors that are more about proving something to themselves or others than about their sexual orientation. The notion that a man who cheats a lot must be gay is just another way of shaming men for behavior that's been around for as long as humans have existed. Instead of jumping to conclusions about their sexuality, it's more logical to understand that these behaviors are often rooted in natural instincts, personal issues, or social conditioning. So, let's stick to the facts and not try to psychoanalyze men. 
based on a misunderstanding of human nature. It's not about denying anything. It's about understanding the real reasons behind the behavior. So yesterday I deleted my hinge and I just want to tell you guys about my last straw with hinge. If you're new here, my name's Tiffany. I've been single for over a year now and I had hinge and bumble. I deleted bumble around two weeks ago because I was so over that app. Listen, this wasn't even like a big deal what he did, but it just pissed me off for some reason because I'm like, I've been wasting my time on hinge for the past few months and I've gotten nowhere. I like went on a couple dates with a guy. I don't even know. I w went on a few dates from hinge, but nothing that great and just isn't that great out there anyway so this guy it was in the first two messages which should have been a red flag i think he said something like hey and then i said hey and he was like let's continue this combo on instagram and gave me his instagram and he did look like one of those guys that maybe i don't know like gave off the vibe like looking for a little bit of clout or whatever and so I went to his Instagram, I followed him, and right, it looked like Tiffany, I went through some of his reels, and it looks like he's trying to be a comedian or whatever. Now I don't think the he's funny. Of what's going on here. First off, deleting Hinge or Bumble isn't going to change the fact that dating apps are designed to keep you hooked, not necessarily to find you true love. The swipe culture is about instant gratification. People are looking for quick validation, not deep connections. So, when a guy immediately shifts the convo to Instagram, it's not a shocker. Social media is where he builds his brand. And unfortunately, for a lot of guys, dating apps are just an extension of that self-promotion game. You mentioned that this guy seemed like he was looking for clout. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Many men and women are on these apps for attention, followers, or even just to pass the time. The truth is, the more attractive or interesting someone appears on these platforms, the more options they have. And with so many options, commitment becomes less of a priority. It's not about you personally. It's about the system that encourages this kind of behavior. The dating market is what it is, competitive, superficial, and often disappointing. Instead of expecting meaningful connections from platforms that prioritize looks over substance, it might be time to rethink where and how you're looking for relationships. People who are genuinely interested in getting to know you won't rush to move the conversation to Instagram. They'll take the time to engage with you on the app and show real interest. So, if you're fed up with the cloud chasers and superficial interactions, you're not alone. The key is to understand the dynamics at play and adjust your expectations accordingly. You deserve more than being a part of someone's follower count or side hustle. The biggest ick to me is when a man is like blowing me up or texting me or DMing me and I don't respond and they hit me with the, do you hate me All right, now or something? Let's break this down. When a guy is blowing up your phone after that you text you, I do me now message what you're seeing is a lack of confidence and a high level of neediness and yes that's an instant turn off for most women because it signals insecurity but here's the thing this behavior is a result of the modern dating dynamics where men often feel they need to chase over communicate and constantly seek validation to stay on a woman's radar the reality is, men who are confident and self-assured aren't going to blow up your phone or worry if you're not responding. They understand their value and know that if you're interested, you'll respond when you're ready. The do you hate me now? Text is basically a plea for reassurance. And while it might seem harmless, it reflects deeper issues of insecurity and a lack of self-respect. But let's not overlook the flip side modern dating culture encourages this kind of behavior. The constant ghosting, breadcrumbing, and playing hard to get has left a lot of men confused and anxious about where they stand. This leads to them overcompensating, thinking that more effort equals more interest, when in reality, it just pushes women away. Here's the truth, a man who values himself and his time isn't going to overinvest in someone who isn't reciprocating. So, if a guy's hitting you up nonstop, it's probably because he hasn't learned this yet. The best move for him and for you is to let things flow naturally. If you're into him, you'll respond. And if you're not, he should recognize that and move on with his dignity intact. So, yeah, that do you hate me now? Text, it's a sign he needs to step back, reassess, and focus on building his own confidence and self-worth before pursuing anyone. I haven't been back to the gym since this incident, but I have been contacted multiple times by the gym. It has asked me to take down the video that I put on TikTok because it's against company policy to film someone without their consent. Whilst I completely respect that, how can it be against company policy to film someone without their consent, but not against company policy to follow and harass girls around the gym when they're just trying to work out?
The maths is not math here. Also, are they going to tell every single person who's recording themselves in the gym that they can no longer do that because company policy? I don't think so. I see people record themselves in the gym all the time. It's such a cop out. So First until off, they want to remove the that man, I am not removing the video my video. Isn't about protecting the harasser. It's about protecting themselves legally. Filming someone without their consent can open up a whole cut of worms for the gym, so they're likely more concerned about potential lawsuits than anything else. But I get it, it feels hypocritical when the real issue, the harassment, isn't being addressed with the same urgency. No, let's talk about the double standard here. You're absolutely right if it's against policy to film without consent, then it should be enforced across the board, not just when it's inconvenient for the gym. But here's the thing. Enforcing that policy uniformly would mean cracking down on everyone recording their workouts, which is practically impossible. Social media and gym culture are so intertwined now that it's become the norm to see people filming themselves, and gyms know this. As for the harassment, the real problem is that many gyms don't take these situations as seriously as they should. The focus often shifts to damage control like getting you to take down the video rather than addressing the root issue, which is creating a safe environment for everyone. The math isn't mathing because the priorities are skewed. The gym is more concerned about its image and avoiding legal trouble than making sure its members feel safe and respected. From a red pill perspective, this is a classic example of a system that's more interested in protecting itself than its people. The solution, hold your ground. If the gym isn't going to step up and deal with the harassment issue, then they need to understand that sweeping it under the rug isn't going to work in the age of social media. I refusing to remove your video, you're forcing them to confront the problem they'd rather ignore. The gym needs to either enforce their policies consistently, actually address the behavior that's making members uncomfortable, until they do that. Their request for you to take down the video is just a weak attempt to cover their tracks rather than fix the real issue. We're back with another series of my first time. Last time I spoke Thanks about my first time in. giving Everyone, her. Everyone, if you, you found this video this insightful or it sparked some thoughts, her. don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Drop a comment below we'd love to hear your take on today's topic. And remember, stay sharp, stay informed, and always keep questioning the world around you. Until next time, peace.